<laughs> hey, what's up, Sean? Welcome. SNB Swim, Kate, Tyler, what's up? Oh, my kids are here. Hello. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Bourbon Lounge, what's up? Hey, Ball Barber, what's going on, man? I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Seth, hey. Welcome, Seth. Paula1389, welcome. Man, my allergies have been terrible. Bone into the future. Ball Barber, I'm confirming right now. I'll be there tomorrow, 11 a.m. I got you. Chris, are you ready to follow along tonight? You got everything ready? Dapper Dad, 68, welcome. I know it is. For those of you that don't know, Chris, Barrels and Mash, uh, he and I had a little FaceTime earlier. It was, it was awesome. OKC Food Eater, welcome. Bourbon Nerd, Whiskey Bank, welcome. D Merrill 64, welcome. I'm excited tonight. We are going to be doing a uh, smoked old fashioned. And I'll tell you what. It, the, the smoke definitely gives a nuance to the drink uh, that is tasty. It adds another element, but it also is a very cool party trick. I'll, I'll give it that much. A lot of people will think this is pretty cool if you do this for them. All right, give it a couple, a couple more minutes. We're we'll getting started. In case you guys are curious what I'm drinking, I am having... Michter's Barrel Strength. I love that stuff. It's so good. Just, ah, it's a little bit pricey for what it is, but there's not much out there that has the mouthfeel that that has, and it just sits with you forever. I can still taste it. It's just, uh, coats the whole mouth. It's delicious. And with airtime, my gosh. So tonight, when we do our old fashioned, um, if some of you are trying to follow along, I'm using a cedar plank. So that's how I'm gonna create the smoke. Uh, Angostura bitters, a bourbon or a rye, and some simple syrup. And that's really all you need. If you wanna try to do the one that I'm doing, uh, I'm using uh, rum in this tonight. So I'm gonna be putting a little twist on it, but it's gonna play very, very nicely into this one. So if you are following along, on this one, and if you have a very rich rum, um, I would definitely encourage you to get that. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and get this, get you guys mounted up, and we'll get going. As you know, once I get you mounted up, I will not be able to see any of the comments that are taking place. So go ahead and continue to have fun talking to each other, and I will scroll back and answer any questions that you might have had, or um, you can ask questions at the very end and I'll answer them there. All right. All right, here we go. So the old fashioned, so the old fashioned is a classic cocktail. There are 22 classic cocktails. This is one of them. It's been around forever. Uh, this is a cocktail that I believe came out somewhere between 1800 and 1810. So yes, it's very old. And it was really something uh, that they came out with to help make whiskey a little bit more palatable, to tell the truth. Uh, so they're trying to put a little bit of sweetness to it, um, add a little bit of that bitter element in there, and just kind of make it taste better. Um, and so that's where you get the old fashioned. This is a drink that is a great gateway drink. It's a bourbon. Uh, so if there's someone that just can't quite get into bourbon and they're looking to get into bourbon, the old fashioned is a great cocktail to go to to be able to do that. Now, traditionally, the old fashioned was made using a sugar cube, Angostura bitters, and a slice of orange. So you'd actually cut an orange up, you'd put a quarter of an orange in there or a slice of an orange peel. Uh, you could even put a couple cherries in there if you wanted to, uh, but mostly it was just orange. You put some sugar cubes in there, one or two, depending on how sweet you wanted it. You would dash the sugar cubes with the bitters, and then you'd sort of muddle that drink together. You'd add your bourbon, stir it up with ice, and then start sipping it. That's how actually I got started drinking old fashions. Uh, the traditional way, my favorite whiskey to use, believe it or not, is a Canadian, it's Pendleton. Uh, there's something about Pendleton that really goes nicely with 
uh, that orange. Um, so I would take cuties. I don't know if you guys have cuties, but the little cuties. Um, I don't think they're technically an orange. Um, but then I would do a half of one of those. So I'd peel it, put a half of one of those in or a couple of the slices in, mash that up with some sugar cubes and some Angostura, add some bourbon and then and get going. Then uh, I started experimenting with the old fashioned and started getting a little crazy. And I'm not the only one. Every bar out there has some variation of an old fashioned and they're delicious. A lot of them are. It's a very simple drink to make. Um, the cool thing about an old fashioned is you don't have to limit yourself to just bourbon or rye. You can go into rum, you can go into tequila and mezcal. Um, it really, the sky's the limit in the ratio that you're mixing and what spirits that you're using. But ultimately you're looking at two ounces of whatever your spirit is um, and then some part of sweet. Now the rum I'm using tonight is gonna be Pilar 24. It's a very affordable rum, it's very inexpensive. It's a rum blend in finished casks. It's super sweet. It tastes like brown sugar. It's delicious. I think it plays very, very nicely with the Willet three year rye that I'm using tonight. This does have a little bit of a sweetness to it, but there is a little bit of a spice uh, that comes through with this rye, especially this Willet three year. And so this sort of balances it out. Uh, I'm gonna be using Angostura bitters and I'm also gonna be adding uh, spiced orange bitters. So this is actually uh, Beehive bitters. They're on Instagram. Look him up, he makes amazing craft bitters. Um, I really like his spiced orange bitters and so that's what I'm using. And last is gonna be simple syrup. This is just a Demerara simple syrup, so it's an unrefined sugar. So it's, that's why it's a darker color, but we're only gonna call for a bar spoon of that. And then of course, we're gonna be smoking it. So let's talk about the smoking. So I have a cedar plank. Um, I've been practicing a little bit cause I was a little rusty, but this is just your typical cedar plank that you would get. Um, at the hardware store, I think I bought it at Lowe's, that you would do salmon on, chicken, I mean, whatever on the barbecue. Usually you would soak it in water for an hour, then you'd go ahead and, and do it on the barbecue. This is unsoaked, just buy it as is. You can also get like a cast iron skillet, get some oak chips, apple, apple wood chips, um, pretty much anything, and use the chips, put them inside of that cast iron pan, light those in fire, and get it going. Really all you're trying to do is gonna get that smoke effect, um, to add the ambience. So without further ado, I think you guys want to see the fire. Let's get started. So I'm just using a little butane torch, um, nothing fancy. Um, a lot of people have these to make creme brulee or something like that. You can use the big old fancy torches if you want to. Um, but all you're gonna do is get this torch. And what I'm gonna start doing is I'm just gonna start getting a nice circle and heating up this cedar plank that we have here. So I will tell you this, you're gonna get a little bit of flame going. That's what you want. You want to keep going. You want to start seeing it. So it almost gets a little bit of that alligator char. I'm going in a new spot, but typically what I do if I'm making these cocktails is I'll go in the same spot I've used um, until it starts to get a pretty big indentation. But you really want to heat this up because the more you heat it up and the more of a flame you get going, uh, the more smoke that you're going to get when you snuff it out with the glass. So now that I got this nice and hot and got it going, all I'm going to do is take the glass and I'm going to put it right over there. And then you'll notice what's going to happen is this glass is going to start basically filling up with smoke. And so we're just going to leave it there and we're going to let that just continue to fill up with smoke. And then we're going to get to work building our cocktail. All right. So for this old fashioned, what we're going to do is we are going to be mixing tonight. And so I'm going to start with my rye bourbon. Now this calls for two parts, but because I'm putting rum in it, I'm going to be splitting that two parts. So that two ounces, uh, between these two. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and a half ounces of my Willet three year rye. So we got one and a half ounces of that Willet three year. And then I'm going to move on to my Pilar 24. And this, I'm telling you, this is an absolutely delicious rum. It's so good by itself. Ah, I know because it's a blend, it's going to disappear. So I bought up a few bottles just to have, um, but it's so good. So the rest of it is going to make up. So half an ounce. So two ounces is the total. So one and a half ounces of the Willet and then one half ounce of the Pilar 24. Now that we got that added, I'm going to go ahead and put in three dashes of my Angostura bitters. This is just a bitters, uh, fancy bitters bottle. Um, I basically took Angostura open, popped the cap and dumped it into this. So I got three dashes of my bitters. And then I'm going to do a half of a dropper of the spiced orange bitters. So I got half a dropper, 
the bitters. Now, I like my old fashions really strong. And so one thing is if you like a stronger cocktail or more spirit forward cocktail, um, then you're going to go ahead and just follow the steps that I'm making. If you don't like a spirit forward cocktail, you're going to follow the steps I'm making, but at the very end, you're going to add a splash of water to the drink. And I'll remind you of that at the end. And I'm just going to do a bar spoon of my simple syrup. And now that I got my bar spoon of my simple syrup, my three dashes of bitters, my half of an eyedropper of the, of the smoked, or I'm sorry, of the spiced orange bitters. I got a half ounce of Pilar and three ounce rum. Now it's time for me to go ahead and uh, get some ice and mix this up. And I forgot my ice. Addy, can you give me the ice? It's in a bowl. So you'll notice that this is already just snuffed out. All the smoke is just sitting in the cup. I am using a cup that kind of goes to more of a tulip as a tulip shape or no more of a smaller open at the top because uh, that's just kind of retains that smoke better. So now that I got my ice, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up and then we are gonna be stirring. So once again, when it comes to stirring, you're gonna fill your ice up, you're gonna go ahead and grab your bar spoon and what I like to do is do a push pull. So I kind of go around and you're going around the ice. So you really don't want to disturb the ice. You want that ice to just kind of go in a circular motion. And what you're really looking for is you're looking for that ice to go down, eh, I would say about three quarters of the way. So it'll settle down in there, about three quarters down, get it nice and cold, and that's what you're doing. When you're stirring cocktails, it's very hard to get them very, very cold. Um, it's just one of those things. So, but it will cool it down. And now that we got that stirred up, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my julep strainer. I'll put that on there. And then you'll see as I flip this over, some of the smoke is coming out. Go ahead and dump in my old fashioned. You'll see some of the smoke still kind of lingering in there. And after I've done that, I'll just add um, a couple more ice cubes. And then my garnish, I just have some cherries. And there you have it. Smoked old fashioned. You'll see the smoke still coming out just a little bit. But man, the aroma from the smoke really draws out a lot of that. Just uh, one of the spiced orange bitters that are in there. Uh, but just some of the earthier, you know, just like, like the peel notes that you get um, from some of the bourbon. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. This rum, I'm telling you, plays so nicely with this Willet. They balance each other out so well. And they add a sweetness and a dimension to this old fashioned that I just think... One smooths out the edges quite a bit, but also just is absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, like I mentioned before, if you are someone that doesn't like your drink to be a little bit spirit, more spirit forward, this is the time where you would add a splash of water. Um, so maybe a quarter ounce to a half ounce of water, you would just dump that in over the top, and then that would really even mellow it down even more. It's still, it's still going to be full of flavor and really good. It's just gonna be not as boozy um, so if you have a guest and you do this for them and you take it and the first sip they make, they say, it's, oh man, that's really strong. Just add a splash of water to it, give them back to it, and it'll be perfect. Um, or you can just continue to let your ice dilute and then it'll just continue to mellow more um, as the ice dilutes. So there you go. Cheers. I'm going to go ahead and grab you, answer any questions that you might have. All right. Get you guys a close up of the uh, of the drink and the board as they go through. All right, let's see. Paula one three eight nine, you have a joke. <laughs> uh, Roland N J, what's up, man? Paula one three eight nine, what's going on? I'm telling you, this is easier than it looks. It's super, super easy to do it. It looks fancy. It's really not. And it doesn't leave, it doesn't put off a ton of smoke. 
podcast popped on and said, hello, what's up? Yeah, they're at the Predators game. Right on. People everybody, what's up? Barrel proof, barrel proof flies. It is good, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, will not do it. Breaking bourbon, every time I say it's fantastic, it's because it is. I don't make a drink if I don't like it and it's not perfected, I'll tell you. I practiced all weekend dialing in and choosing which actual rum and which bourbon or rye I wanted to use. Straight out of KY. Tessa, what's up? What about if a, pit, a bit of a peaty scotch? So Andy, yeah, so you could get a smoke element from a peaty scotch, but I'm not trying to get the smoke in the taste. So what you're gonna get in this is more of just the smoke smell. And so you're not tasting smoke when you drink the drink, you're just smelling it. And so it's adding to the complex complexity of it, but it's not dominating the taste or contributing too much to the taste. It still tastes very much like an old fashioned. It's just, it's just waking up one more sense when you drink it. But you could try it, man. Absolutely try a peaty scotch. PLB, I will not, I will not forget to save this. I promise. Yeah, cedar, cedar smells so good. Yeah, so Chris was making it when he, when he was uh, doing it. You do not taste smoke in this at all. It just adds to the character of the drink. Yes, yes. Chris is backing me up, see, see? What else? My allergies, man, my nose is all swollen from my allergies. It's terrible. <laughs> Rolling NJ, it's hard work, man. I, I'm telling you, I'm making cocktails. <laughs> Uh, I'll take that work any day of the week. What else going on out there? Anything? Hey, Robbie, what's up, man? You can come over here and have a smoked old fashioned. Get over here. Yeah, the P I'm telling you, if you see Pilar 24 on the shelf, grab it in an instant. It's, uh, I want to say it's $35. Uh, it is, pff, it's delicious. Other favorite vari variations of the old fashioned. Um, so I like a variation of an old fashioned called Oxicana, Ox, man, I'm gonna butcher it. It's basically with tequila and mezcal. Um, it has nothing to do with bourbon. That one has more of that smoky taste to it. And it's kind of where I got the idea of doing a smoked um, old fashioned in the first place. What was the question? Nuances and essences of the best fancy things for cocktails. <laughs> the Dasher bottles actually measure differently than the Angostura bottles. They do. Um, and I wouldn't be able to tell you what that is. When I, oxycontin, when I do a dash, I don't know. A mint julep on Derby Day. Is it Derby Day? Man, I live in California, so like Derby is not like a big thing out here. Yes, that's it. Oaxacan Old Fashioned. That is exactly what I was talking about, OKC Food Eater. Yes, that one is uh, tequila and mezcal in there. It's fantastic. It's delicious. <laughs> Dude, Dan, get out here. You drive out here. Drive out here on Tuesday nights, man. Hang out with me. So, all right, so if you guys don't have any more questions, I will tell you a couple things that I got working on. Uh, so going back to that mint julep. So for the mint julep, uh, yeah, maybe I'll make one. I mean, they're super easy. You just basically take six to seven mint leaves, you take a bourbon, um, and then you take a simple syrup, and then you kind of you basically make a bourbon slushy in a way. I'll tell you what the, tr the trick is. This is the trick, this. So if you are gonna make a you know, if you're, if you're going to be making a julep, you need to get a julep cup. I know it sounds silly, uh, but this really will make all the difference in the world. The reason being is because part of the mint julep is that crushed ice and how they pack that ice in there. And when they pack that ice and they use a cup like this, what happens is uh, the conduction that you get from this metal cup, it gets it all frosty. It also slows down the ice so it doesn't melt as fast. 
Um, it adds just another dynamic to the drink, um, but it really is what makes all the difference um, when you're having this. But you just basically go ahead and you know take six to seven mint leaves, dump them in you know one of the mixing glasses like this. Uh, put I don't know half ounce of simple syrup or even three quarters if you want it a little bit sweeter. Put two ounces of bourbon in there. You know muddle that together. Pour that into you know your julep cup. Pack it with ice. Throw a straw in there. You're good to go. We could do mint juleps. The thing with my mint juleps is I'm super picky about them. So mint juleps, because they're so simple and because they're such a strong, strong drink, like I just prefer, uh, I just prefer to rather just drink bourbon, to be honest with you. Um, but I do not use powdered sugar. I've used powdered sugar in the past. I'm not a fan of it. I use my trusted Demerara simple syrup. So this is what I do to taste. And usually I'm not making it very sweet. In the past, um, what I've done is I've made a mint simple syrup and then after I've made the mint simple syrup, I've actually ratioed it out. I've added the bourbon to the mint simple syrup. And then what I did was put it in a mason jar, put a lid on top and I put it in the fridge and I let it sit in there for about a month. And then it sort of all just kind of mellowed together. And then after I did that, then I just kind of had pre-batched ready to made mint juleps. And so all I did was pack one of these with ice. And then I kind of poured over the top um, and, you know, start drinking it. And that was good. That was something that I really, really liked. Yeah, mint syrup, it, it, if you make a mint syrup and you do it right, it tastes more minty than when you middle, muddle the mint leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you one thing that um, I got, I'm working on right now. So I don't know if you guys listened to the podcast episode uh, where they were talking about the Fred Minnick one. I think Grease's mom was on there too. It was hilarious. Um, but if you read the Fred Minnick article, you'll know that a lot of the winners in San Francisco this year, they were doing blends. Like they're doing blended bourbons. And so, and not to mention, and I'm, I'm so glad I have this. Boom, barrel rum. So glad I found another bottle of that one because it's absolutely fantastic too. Um, but everyone's doing blends and blends are creating such uh, a splash on the scene right now. And I mean, one of my absolute favorite, I'd say probably, you know, if it's not my number one, my number two, this Kentucky Owl Batch 6 blend. That is all the rave right now because it's creating so much complexity in the bourbon. And I'm telling you, blends is the next wave. So I know everyone's saying like rum, 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 rum. Go buy rums, rums is the next wave. Rum is rum, right? Rum will never replace bourbon or rye. It's still very good. You can still find some really cool ultra aged rum for dirt cheap, but it's never gonna replace bourbon. Will it be the next boom? Who knows? Um, but I'll tell you this. For those of you that are out there on Instagram and you know who you are because you're on here right now, you have a ton of bottles open. Probably most of the people on here that I'm looking at right now have at least 10 bottles of bourbon open right now. Start blending stuff. So uh, my bourbon fairy who lives out in Chicago, um, we talk all the time and he, also hook, he always hooks me up with stuff too. Uh, he has been experimenting with blends and so what he did is he has, I mean, on Friday, he already shipped it to me on Friday. I think he sent me like 15 blends uh, that he is making on. And that's 15 out of 30 something that he's done. And I'm going to be tasting through them. And then I'm going to be, um, I'm, I'm tasting through them blind. And then I'm going to be giving him sort of my results on the blends. Um, and then I'm going to be making 12 blends myself. And I've already been putting notes together about which, which sort of flavor characteristics I like. Um, and so I'll be putting those blends together myself and I'm doing it in the two ounce sample bottles. Everyone has a million of the two ounce sample bottles. So figure out what your ratios are, mark it down, put it in the two ounce sample bottle, and then just let it sit and let it sit for at least a week. Let it kind of mingle together and then start tasting it. Um, I'm telling you right now, that is how things are going to be in the future. And plus you guys, I mean, you have so many bottles right now. Everyone wants the new, 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 but you have a million thousand combinations of new if you start blending with what you have. 
You just need to figure out what characteristics you like, and you should know because you drink a ton of bourbon and rise. And so start picking out those characteristics, start thinking what really, you know, brings that home and then start working with it. Like I can tell you right now, if I want vanilla, Maker's Mark, right? I'll go to Maker's Mark, boom, I got a whole boatload of vanilla there. If I want that like caramely, really strong, um, caramel oak flavor, flavor, Booker's, boom, done. So take sort of your one dimensional bourbons that you have out there and then start adding them to something else. You want spice? Four Roses. Four Roses does great stuff with spice. Boom, start mixing Four Roses with, um, you know, maybe a bottle and bond will it and see what it does. I mean, the sky's the limit out here, but I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna probably get a little bit of retribution for this, but I've actually been experimenting by putting just a touch of, of rum in some of my blends as well. And that rum, when I put it in some of those bourbon blends, just completely sets it off and brings a whole new dimension. So yeah, anyways, I was on a soapbox. I went on a huge tangent. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, scotch. Scotch is it. Scotch to me, though, is a very mellow blend. So they do a good job, but I think their goal is, is to... I like the punch that... I like the punch that bourbon and rye have. I mean, it, it's in your face. So... Anyways, <laughs> Roland and Jay, I'm telling you, blends are the future. So I'm hoping I'm not blowing too much, but I'm working on something. Um, podcast guys, I've already been talking to Will. And so I, once me and my bourbon fairy, when we get some of our, our blends um, kind of down, we're going to send him, I already told him, we're going to send him our top five. And then we're going to have him taste them. And then if they want to do something with it, they can do something with it. But uh, yeah. I'm telling you, the rum kick is a secret ingredient because there's a lot of rums out there. I'm going to go on another tangent. There's a lot of rums out there that are really good by themselves. And there's a lot of rums out there that are not good by themselves. However, when you mix them into a drink, they're outstanding. And there is a characteristic in certain rums that really shines and really comes out in certain cocktails. And that's what you're trying to do when you're making cocktails. You're trying to basically it's cooking with liquid. So you're basically trying to get the taste profiles and the ingredients that you really like in those spirits, blend them together, make yourself a cocktail and bring them out, draw them out so that they're good. And so there are a lot of rums out there that when you mix them into say a bourbon that is a little bit hot um, and just it, it has that astringency in it that you just can't get over, it, it, it completely takes it away. Like that astringency is gone. And uh, now you have yourself a very mellow tasting bourbon that's just absolutely outstanding, super good. Did you, <laughs> Barrels of Mash, did you try the Zaya by itself? What did you think about it? It should taste like vanilla. It should just be like boatloads of vanilla. And oh, by the way, Chris at Barrels and Mash, was, he was sending me some pictures about um, what, uh, what rum he should buy because he couldn't find the Pilar 24 to follow along. And he had Zaya with a 12 year age statement on the bottle that went away in like 2010. So from 2007 to 2010, Zaya was just absolutely outstanding. It was fantastic rum for super cheap, like less than 30 bucks. Then they kind of bumped up the price a little bit and then they started running out of the, the uh, rum that they were sourcing so they started sort of sourcing different rum and doing different blends and it has it fallen off a little bit yes um, it has but it's still really really good uh, but the fact that you found one of those bottles one of those older bottles i'm super jealous because those are mm, those are tasty but i believe blends are the future absolutely that's the only way this bourbon industry is going to be able to continue to drive this huge boom that we have going on as age statements are dropping off the bottles, as everyone is scrambling to keep stock up, everyone's trying to source, they got craft distilleries on their heels, putting out some pretty freaking fantastic stuff, which they used to snub and scoff at saying, good luck with your craft distillery, we're big boys, we have all the contracts to source, oh, and by the way, we have boatloads of bourbon that we've been aging for, you know, 10 plus years, you know, I'll see you in a, uh, you know, I'll see you in a decade and maybe you have something good. Ah, what did they start doing? Craft spirits, Psh. they started going in, putting it, aging it faster and then blending. 
blending their stuff so it tasted good. And then now they're coming out and making a huge splash on the scene. Boom. Anyways, I'm on a rant. I'm not the Cal I'm not the California gold guy. I swear in my life. I'm not. I'm not. I've actually had a couple of the California golds. Um, I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan of them. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't a huge fan of them. Um, they were good. They were, they were good in the way that they were they had a lot of flavor and they were very mellow, but they were not very complex. They just weren't very complex. From, in my opinion, for what that guy's charging, uh, you're buying that bottle and that label because they just aren't super complex. Keep ranting. <laughs> uh, you guys agree with me? I'm telling you, man, blends are where it's at. Start blending some stuff. Look on your shelf. Look on your shelf, grab some stuff, and just start, just start mixing stuff up. California Gold Sweet. Yeah, so I had one of them at Catfish too. I remember that one, and it was not good. It was not good. Look, all right, boom. All right, so don't even get me started. Here's the deal. Melicorn, everybody, if you have Melicorn bottled and bond, this is under $10, right? What characteristic do you get out of this one? Corn, right? Really sweet corn taste. It is also a little bit hot, and it has a little bit of astringency on it. So let's just say you took a little bit of mellow corn and then you mixed it with, hmm, I don't know, high rise 1792. But when I say mix it with high rise 1792, it's not like you're taking one ounce of the mellow corn, one ounce of the high rise 1792, and then that's your blend. It could be, but what you're doing is you're going, hmm, high rise 1792. What does this have? This has a really sweet taste, a little bit of a spice, um, but for what it is, it's just a really polished high rye mash bill bourbon that's going on right now. So, hmm, maybe I want to add a little bit more of that corn flavor dynamic to it just to see what would happen. So maybe you take one and three quarters ounces of this, oh, and a quarter ounce of this, and then you mix it together and see what happens. And then you let it sit for a week, shocking, you get a little bit of that corn note that you really like in mellow corn without the astringency and all the polish and finish of the high rye. Magnificent. All right, where else should I go? What else can we talk about? Hmm, let's see. Uh, let's talk about Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, these are hot. These I open up, I let them sit for probably a month before I even revisit them again so I can tame some of that. And then what I get out of this is I get oak and dark fruits. Tons of oak and dark fruit in Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. So oak and dark fruits, that's fantastic, but maybe I want to mellow it out a little bit. Maybe I want to tame it down, but I still want to keep that bourbon characteristic that's in there. So what do I do? Mm, maybe Knob Creek. Knob Creek has all that caramel goodness that's in there. It's a proof that can sort of stand up to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Let's mix those two together and see what happens. And maybe I'll throw in a splash of Ancient Age 10 Star because what is this bad boy good at? This bad boy's good at being super one dimensional. This thing right here is just vanilla, caramel, bourbon, and it's very, very, the viscosity of it is, is not there, right? There's, it's just, it's not very porous. It's just, it's a little bit watery. Um, it's a lower proof. And maybe I'll bring that in and mix, to kick it down a notch. All right, anyways, anyways. <laughs> I'm pulling that Kentucky Owl. Do it right now live. It takes, a, it really, the, the trick is, is that it takes a week to really mill it. All right, one more. So everyone has been building these infinity bottles. So I've had this forever. I'll show you, I'll prove it to you. So I've been just kind of throwing stuff in there. You know, my bottoms of my bottles, etc. Here's my book. So everything that I dump into, that goes in here. So initially I started it by doing an ounce, right? So started it 06-20-2016. You'll start seeing that I just started putting an ounce of everything in there. If I added more, I added how many more ounces I did. That was the bottom of a bottle. Boom, boom, and boom, right? So now you're seeing, you know, basically all of the stuff that I've been putting in that infinity bottle 
and then you start to really start to see what happens as it mellows and things start changing the dynamic of taste by just mixing everything together. I and mean, we all did it. You guys all went to the soda machine and did a suicide, right? So you took your soda cup and you went across and you found, you know, just a splash of every soda that's on the soda machine. And then eventually what happened? You decided like, I don't think that's very good. I don't like every soda in there, but there was three that tasted really good mixed together. So what did you do? You had your little secret combo that you went up to the soda machine and you did your little ratio of stuff to make your drink. Boom. I'm way on a rant tonight. All right. Bar mat shot. I don't have a bar mat. Kristen, I don't have a bar mat. That would be cool though. Suicides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, my old fashioned is, uh, is melting down. You can listen to me rant all day. Uh, my, my other rant would be about people that buy bottles and sit on them and don't drink them. You know, my hero on here, I'm not gonna lie, my hero on here is Bourbon Lounge because Bourbon Lounge, not only does he do the man for it, but I know that guy's going through bottles and he's opening stuff and drinking it. Will on the podcast opens everything, drinking it. Grease, he opens stuff. He just pretends like he doesn't. Zyastrate is amazing, man. It's delicious, especially that you got that older bottle. You're gonna get spoiled, man. You, you better go buy another bottle of that if it's still on the shelf because the newer Zyas don't taste like what you have. <laughs> the mixer's barrel strength is kicking in. <laughs> I, only had a, I only had one ounce in one sip of an old-fashioned. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm telling you, blends and opening stuff. I mean, in bottles, like, uh, here's the deal with bourbon. Like, open it, drink it, because... 99.9% .9 of the time, if you open up a bottle and you go back to it in a month or you go back to it in six months, it's going to taste better. Good night, Kristen. It's going to taste so much better. Um, if you open up a bottle like this Booker's that I opened up, there was some heat on the front when I did it. And it should. It's 64.25%. I'll tell you right now, this bottle, I'll drink it to probably, or I'll drink it just right here. So about halfway down, just like I did this big man small batch, and I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna let this sit on the shelf for probably a good three to four months before I even revisit it again. And what's gonna happen is a lot of the, a lot of the alcohol uh, that's on there, the esters and things like that, those are gonna just dissipate as it breathes and it's going to just still remain intact. It's gonna have the characteristic that you loved about it when you first tasted it. It's just gonna be more malicious. And I, it just is what it is. I will go on a rant on this because you gotta open the bottles. Yes, OKC Fooder, yes, exactly. Sean, good night, man, thanks for joining. So if, I mean, if you want some actual truth behind opening bottles, and them getting better, I'll tell you a quick little story and then I'm getting off here. So I was listening to a podcast today. It's called Shift Drink Podcast. They do an amazing, amazing job um, just talking about all liquors and just the industry in general when it comes to alcohol. Now, let's take cognac. Let's take schnapps. Not schnapps like, not this schnapps. Not, not uh, peppermint, the Cooper shop schnapps. I'm talking about craft schnapps. Stuff that people are you know, sourcing quality ingredients and making high proof schnapps, 60% alcohol. I want to know, does anybody know how do you age schnapps? How do you age high quality stuff like that? Anyone know? I'm gonna give it like two more seconds. <laughs> They actually put it in what's called a balloon and it's a huge glass bottle that looks like a balloon. The top is open. They put a cloth over the top of it so that stuff doesn't fall inside the bottle, but it still can breathe. You know how long they let quality schnapps sit on the shelf and let it breathe? Sometimes 10 years, 10 years, a decade. It's the opposite of what's going on, right? So they're making bourbon, they're putting it in barrels, it's mellowing out. Just like if you were to take, if you're gonna drink white lightning or you're gonna drink something fresh off the still, it's going to have 
this sort of young, really meaty, grassy flavor. It gets it draws in all the barrel, you know, goodness and the char. And then, you know, it mellows it down and then they bottle it. But with schnapps and stuff, they're putting these 60% proofers or 60%, 120 proofers in a big glass bottle that they leave open and they let breathe. What happens is all of the flavor that's in there, all the different fruits that they're using, everything that they have going on in there mingles and settles and changes. And I don't know the chemistry of it, but what happens is it tastes really, really good. And it costs a lot of money to get those. And quite honestly, the same effect happens when you open your bourbon and your rye. When you open your bourbon and your rye, a lot of the flavor that's in there, it doesn't go flat. It changes, um, but what happens is it just sort of settles down. Yes, it concentrates. It gets very, very good. And I'm telling you, if you go back and look at a bunch of people's posts, everyone always says like the bottom of my bottle, that was the best. Like when I got to the bottom, I'm so sad to see it go. It was the best. And the reason is because it had that time to oxidize. It had that time to, you know, get rid of all that astringency taste that's in there. All those esters were able to dis, you know, dissipate or mix, or I don't even know what I'm talking about, but it makes it better. I'm telling you, it makes it better. Um, like I couldn't stand the rhetorics uh, when I first opened them up, like rhetoric, uh, 20, 21 and 22 year, like they just, mm, they were not good. And I'm telling you, like, I just went back to them probably, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And I tasted that flight after them being open for almost six months. And they are delicious. They are so good. They're way, way better than when I first opened them. Another one I'll show you. This is my favorite. I, this is my last bottle. I wish I had one more. This barrel bourbon batch nine is unreal it's out of this world good and this one is one where i drink down to about a quarter and i'm it's still good but i let it sit and this thing after a month just oh, it's out of this world good like i don't know what happens during that oxid oxidization process of this but it is freaking delicious and so i mean you very rarely you run into somebody that says man i got to the bottom and it was just it just didn't taste good because it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You usually can't taste anything by the time we get to the bottom. <laughs> That's because you drank it all the way to the bottom. <laughs> Bourbon Spartan, yes, 09 is better and better every time you go back to it. That's absolutely true. And I cannot keep myself out of that bottle because of it. Because the longer it sits, the better it gets. More of that candy char just starts to come out so, so strong and all that heat goes away from it. Oh, it's mm, so good. I swear on my life, I will, if anyone finds a, a batch, this batch, here, I'll show them my time. If anyone finds a batch nine, I'm telling you, let me know. I'll buy it off you. I freaking love it. It's delicious. I'm on the lookout all the time. I got super excited today because I thought I found one. It was an 8B. All right. We got way off track. We got on a tangent. I appreciate everyone joining. Um, yeah, didn't care for it at first. Now it's one of your favorites. It's so good. Barrels of mash. Wow, oh, barrel bourbon so good. I'll have to take care of you on this one. I have, I, I, I come across batch ones all the time. Um, batch ones are still floating around out here. Twos, fours. Um, I've seen a sixes, eight B. Um, just no nines. Can't get nines. Okay, seafood eater. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Bring a bourbon. See you, man. Enjoy the uh, mint juleps this weekend. Tyler, I'll see you later. As always, thanks for joining. If you have any ideas uh, for cocktails, uh, let me know. Still trying to figure out what I'm doing next week. I'll see you later. Bye. See you at Bourbon Lounge.